Hey everyone, Neil with Lamasu. In this video, I'll be giving a look at our admin's view on transactions, analytics, managing customer profiles, and configuring the compliance suite. Starting with the dashboard, we've got a quick view at our system performance here, such as recent transactions of the day and week, our profit trend, and cash in, cash out directions. We've also got our coin prices here, both what we're giving to the user as well as the spot price for us. There's a summary of the machines on our network, and I can jump into individual ones to see more. And we've got alerts. None yet, so the system's running smoothly. Hopping over to the analytics page, I can now see more detail on my network's transactions over the past day, week, or month. I can narrow it down by specific machines, And I can also view a breakdown of my top performing machines across the network. Additionally, I can see what the busiest times tend to be on specific days of the week. Heading over to the transactions themselves, I've got a list here of all my most recent ones. Expanding this, I've got all the relevant details, and I can even download records specifically for this transaction in case I want to look into it further. For this customer, I've got as well the KYC they presented to the machine at the time, including their phone number, ID data, customer photo, and the photo taken at the terms and conditions screen. Clicking here, I can jump directly into this customer's profile. I've got a quick summary of key details, including his transaction volume, last purchase amount, and his list of past transactions. Customer data here shows me all the KYC info I've collected from the machine for this user. Here's the extract from the back of his ID card, which I can update as needed. I've got his phone number here, as well as an option to pull subscriber info via the Akata plugin. In this case, if the user has a postpaid phone plan, this can retrieve their name and address, which you can compare to the data you received elsewhere. Sanctions check compares the ID data you've collected against the OFAC sanctions list for any matches. I've captured a social security number as well. Here's the photo the machine collected via the front-facing camera which I can compare against the ID card image I also had it capture. If these don't match, for instance, I can reject a piece of data so that they must submit a new scan the next time they use the machine, or I can block them entirely. Additionally, if I've obtained a better or updated photo through another means, I can upload and replace the one I have here. In this panel, I can add any text notes I'd like on the customer. Let's say I've had interactions with them. Now I'll make a note of that. I can edit that at any time or add a new one. Under Photos and Files, I've got any photos I've captured from the user including through the customer camera and ID photo scans. Opening one of these up, I've got a photo roll, and since I've captured additional pictures at the Terms and Conditions page, I have photos now for each transaction this customer has placed. A little later, I'll show you how to configure each of those. Now let's say I've got a piece of data I requested from the customer by some other means than the machine. With the manual data entry option, I can choose to add this info now, such as an ID image, so that when the customer uses the machine, they won't have to submit this again. In the same vein, I can add a customer directly without them needing to use the machine for the first time. In this case, I confirm their phone number 
and I can go about adding all the details I have so they don't need to spend that time submitting to KYC at the machine. We can also see Getty's been pretty active and gotten himself suspended for a few days based on our compliance triggers. If I go to his profile, I can unsuspend him here if I choose. So to understand how customer data is requested, let's take a look at the compliance suite under the triggers page. Here, I've already configured a set of compliance triggers to capture phone number, ID scans, customer photos, and the like. Triggers are actions carried out at the machine when a customer conducts certain transaction behavior that you specify. Let me add one here so you can see. You can configure triggers across a number of dimensions. So we can choose between a sheer transaction amount, a volume over a certain number of days, the velocity of transaction over some days, or transactions across a consecutive number of days. I'll choose volume and set this to $3,000 over the course of 30 days. Below we have an explanation of what the trigger means so far. Next, we'll choose a requirement. This can be a piece of KYC info, or a suspension period, or a full block of the customer. I'll choose US Social Security number. And now this will apply to all users' current and future volumes. For any details obtained by the triggers, we can either allow the user input to be accepted by default or require that they be manually reviewed before allowing the user to advance compliance tiers. To do so, we'll add an override in the advanced settings panel and then choose the requirement that we want to manually review. Once I've set that, going back to the list of customers, we'll now see that these are pending review prior to transacting further. And it's here under the customer data that I can accept or reject that ID for the manual requirement. One other type of trigger we can set is a custom info request. This allows you to create your own screen prompt for the user and accept any input. For example, we'll create one to ask the user whether they're a politically exposed person. I'll give it a name. Here, I'll define the text I'll present the user with at the machine obtaining their consent to proceed. Now I can choose between types of data entry. I can require a numerical entry type, a text entry, or a list of choices. For this one, I just need a yes or no option, so I'll choose choice list. Here, I'll define the text for the screen requesting their input. I'll choose just one option as a constraint and give them values. Once we've established our custom info request, we'll create a new compliance rule to trigger it. I'll set this at the first dollar so that it's asked alongside phone number for first time users. Another feature of the compliance suite are crypto address blacklists. If you know of addresses you need to prevent from interacting with your machine, you may add those here. Additionally, if your machine includes a printer, you can stipulate that all cash-in transactions produce paper wallets. This ensures you're sending to a fresh wallet owned by the user. Similarly, you can require that the machine reject any addresses that may have been used before, necessitating a fresh address each time. Another aspect to the compliance suite is CypherTrace address scoring. Jumping over to the third-party services panel, 
you may input your CypherTrace API credentials in the authorization value field and set an address score threshold based on their scoring mechanism. This way, addresses scanned at the machine are submitted to CypherTrace for analysis, rated, and prohibited from transacting if scoring above your threshold for risk and association. One last element to highlight for compliance is the Terms and Conditions feature. Here under Operator Info, we can configure a set of terms and conditions will require the user to accept before proceeding. Also, here's that setting we saw the results of within the customer profile. When the user accepts the terms and conditions, we can capture a photo as well in order to ensure that the same user is authenticating each time. The full text of the screen can be customized, including the title, content, and accept and cancel buttons. That's it for this video. Please check out our other segments showcasing the first time setup process and more advanced features of the Lamasu admin. Ate breve!